With AI being absolutely everywhere in the media, I think it's time to talk about the very specific superpowers and the skills that you need to learn if you're trying to adopt AI. Because the reality right now, if you think about it, is you have so many tools coming out every single day. And what I've realized recently is that the challenge is actually to understand fundamentally how to become that AI powered person, as weird as it sounds, because the common mistake is you choose a specific tool and then you test it out for a week or two, and then you understand, you know what, this actually doesn't fit perfectly into my life, into my routine, into my workflows. And I think it's very important to simplify things for now, especially if you're trying to get started, because my thesis and hypothesis is that the future is very much driven by AI powered specialists. The way I see these future AI powered specialists is very, very simple. I was recently talking to a lawyer and he was actually telling me about building this AI powered chatbot. Now his hour costs around, I think it was $200 per hour, but then he's already using AI chatbots internally to retrieve information quicker. So instead of him actually going through all of the data manually to understand, okay, this information was on page 78, this was on page 55, he's already using AI chatbots internally. But what he's doing now is he's building AI chatbots for his clients. And this was very, very interesting for me to hear and actually understand, you know, what's their strategy behind it. So the idea is very simple. This lawyer will keep uploading his knowledge manually you know, everything he knows, his unique take, expertise, and so on and so on. But then instead of consulting his clients for $200 an hour, clients who need, let's call it basic information from him or something that could be answered with this AI chatbot, he's giving it to them for $10 an hour. And it's a very, very interesting point because you can definitely see the value there. That lawyer has only 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The time is very limited. But with AI chatbots, that person can actually expand his offering and just offer more and more things. And from a customer perspective as well, cheaper, quicker, you can get instantly answers. And this is just one of the examples, obviously, you know, there's so, so many examples out there, but I think this example just really inspired me to create this video. And again, we're not going to talk about tools right now because I think choosing tools can actually distract you a lot because you stick, as I said earlier, you choose one tool and you think it's you know not great, choose another one. And then you, you just keep jumping in between these tools without really understanding fundamentally what is your real AI strategy. Now, this is why I wanna talk about the core AI powers. I personally think there's only basically five AI powers. And you know this is obviously a oversimplified version of it, but I think these are the core ones. Power to build, power to create, power to automate, power to connect, and power to analyze. Pretty much if you're trying to become a hybrid AI powered specialist, I think these are the ones you need to think about. And we'll talk about some of the examples and use cases. But again, purely take this as inspiration to understand in your specific field how to get started. No matter whether you are a lawyer, teacher, doctor, entrepreneur, I do believe that some of these powers will apply, but some of them will be like, no, this is not my case. You know, I don't need this. And that's absolutely fine. But I do think what's important is to acknowledge that they exist, those five very clear categories, and then to understand, you know what, in this field, in this sort of AI power, I can be using it you know, 100% of my time. This specific thing, you know, I only need it for just 10% of the tasks that I actually focus on. So I guess let's just get more specific. Power to build. Power to build is essentially AI assisted coding and no code development, which means if you're building something, there's so many tools out there that will help you now build an app, a website, literally on the go, within, I don't know, 24 hours. And you've probably already seen so many YouTube videos or videos on Instagram showing kind of like a person sitting down for an hour, putting something into chat GPT, and then that person gets the code, exports the code into another design app, there you go. So literally in one or two hours, you have the app ready without really investing too much time or even money, you don't even need to hire developers. And again, if that's something that is resonating with you, then probably it's time for you to build something and experiment and see if you can actually squeeze something out of this pillar. If not, let's get on to the next one. Power to create. I think this is the most common one right now, but 
as obvious as it sounds, it's been very interesting seeing that even though ChatGPT has been released three years ago and there's so many other tools out there, still not everyone is using these instruments to generate images, to generate videos, to generate copy. And I think the biggest challenge is actually integrating it into your routine. So again, this is why what I would do in your case, if you wanted to you know, squeeze the most out of this pillar is actually to identify the very specific use cases in your life. Let's just pretend 8 a.m you need to send an email and you keep doing it manually, well, cool, write it out and then figure out how to build a very, very simple for free chat GPT version that will help you draft that email every single morning. Again, I think it's all about the discipline in the end because people are just not utilizing it, whether it's marketing copy, script writing, ads or anything like that. So I guess let's go on to the next one, power to automate. Now, this one is very, very interesting because you know the first two are essentially all about building, right? Power to create, and the power to build are all about creating something new. But I think because we as humans are very often biased when it comes to our personal efficiency and productivity, we kind of always think that, you know, I'm at my peak, right? I don't need to optimize anything. And what I try to do is actually understand, okay, cool, Vlad, what are the things you're focusing on today? And you can, you can list those 20 things you're doing today. And what I try to do is actually optimize them. And I'm sure no matter whether you're a teacher, lawyer, or anyone else, you have your own routine. So with all of the tools that exist there, like AI agents, chatbots, AI assistants, you can essentially now automate, I would say 70, 80% of your work. Again, the key thing here is understanding the specific workflow and only then identifying the tool that is relevant specifically in your case. But anything that has to do with workflow automation and building AI assistants, it can probably help you grow so, so much and optimize so much of your time. At the end of the day, it comes down to you understanding Understanding the very specific use cases. That's all I have to say for now about power to automate. On to the next one, power to connect. I think this is again, another point that is very often underutilized. What power to connect essentially means is understanding how you could grow either your business or how you could actually grow as a personality, as a freelancer, as a specialist, and essentially working with the right tools to figure out whether it's your new audience, whether it's figuring out your new business strategy, your monetization strategy, or even understanding how you as a lawyer can actually get more clients. Because the reality now is, I think most of us in all of the industries try to just rely on the past experience to figure out you know, what's the best solution. When the reality is you need to find the right relevant tools to understand how you can grow as a specialist, how you can actually grow your business, You know, analyze existing data. For example, something that I do in my business is we actually upload some of the transcripts, some of the logs from our previous customer interactions to understand you know, what people actually want from us. And this is what a lot of e-commerce companies are doing now. Again, instead of assuming, they're figuring out using AI tools how to grow. And again, use this as purely as inspiration. And of course, the challenge is to understand in your case where exactly that's applicable. But then this is also kind of connected to what I just said right now, but power to analyze. I think power to analyze, it's an oversimplified version of saying, hey, you need to not only build something, you need to start collecting data systematically and then analyzing it. So many people now, again, using free tools off the shelf, you know, subscription bases are just paying $20 a month, $30 a month to upload their current data, whether it's, I don't know, pricing, whether it's preferences, whether it's your habits or anything else to then get a very, very clear picture on your current data. And I've especially seen a lot of these when it comes to fitness. A lot of fitness apps are offering this sort of AI powered advice where, you know, you upload all of your trainings, you upload your routine, and then that AI powered chatbot gives you some suggestions, you know, what to change in your lifestyle and stuff like that. So in your industry, again, it could be, I don't know, you're collecting some data, but you don't know what to do with it. Cool, figure out a way to analyze data. I guess the main point is no matter what job you're currently in, I think it's so, so key to not only understand the processes, but to understand the data that is a byproduct of your processes, right? Again, whether it's preferences or anything else, to then systematically analyze it on a daily or weekly basis. Those are the five pillars I would say to get going and to get started with AI. And as I said at the beginning and throughout this video, 
I do think, and again, I wanna just really emphasize and say, don't start with the tools. Because if you start with the tools, you'll kind of be in this, this let's call it rabbit hole. Understand the specific use cases in your life, in your work to understand whether it's going to be the power to build, power to create, power to automate, power to connect, or power to analyze that will be most applicable in your case. And then another, I guess, you know, tip, don't try to tackle all of these at once. Focus on one of them, identify again the very specific use cases, and then go online and find the perfect tool that works for you. I think that's really it for now, because I do think, and I genuinely do believe that the future is going to be very much AI driven and the AI powered specialists are definitely going to beat all of the specialists that won't use AI simply because all of these pillars, they will be able to create quicker, develop quicker, analyze information better. And also as a result of all of that, just offer better products and more products. And that will be this massive competitive advantage. Similar to like that lawyer example, you know, if his AI chatbot is actually going to be popular, that's pretty much insane that the only thing he does is heaps uploading this information on a weekly basis. People use it for $10 every time or every month and they're super happy. This is just, again, one example that is currently not available, you know, through this traditional way of working. And this is why you need to figure out in your case specifically what can you realistically capitalize on, of course, without creating any additional risks for yourself. It just takes a lot of experimenting. But again, I think once you figure it out, then you just keep growing and scaling and scaling. So I hope you found this useful. Again, keep exploring. I hope you enjoyed this video. So there's going to be a lot more on AI tech innovation and stuff like this. So make sure you subscribe. But that's it for now. Talk soon.